The STEPS Engineering Your Future program, STEPS EYF, is designed to inspire transition year students to study engineering. STEPS EYF is an engineering experience program that gives transition year students a hands-on, fun and practical insight into engineering at third level and as a career. STEPS EYF is coordinated by the Engineers Ireland STEPS program and is hosted by third level institutes and industry around Ireland. This annual Engineers Ireland Transition Year initiative has grown from five programmes in 2013 to 18 programmes in 2020, and to date has engaged more than 1,700 students. A total of 18 programmes were planned for the period of March to May 2020. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 crisis, only five of these took place in early March. In total, over 1,100 students applied to participate in STEPS EYF for 2020, and as a way of keeping in contact with these students, the STEPS team would like to offer a taste of STEPS, engineering your future at home. It's impossible to recreate the hands-on experience of STEPS EYF completely. However, we have three video presentations and three challenges aimed at transition year students who are interested in a career in engineering. My name is Mark Langtree, and I'll be your host. And I'm delivering these videos and challenges on behalf of the STEPS team at Engineers Ireland. The videos and challenges have been developed with transition year students in mind. However, please share them and encourage any of your family or friends who are interested in engineering to join in. Let's talk about product design engineering. Products are everywhere around us. We use them every day to perform simple and complex tasks that make our lives easier. Everything you buy or use in your daily life once started as an idea in a design engineer's head. Product design engineers research, design, develop and create the products we use. They also work to improve the performance and efficiency of existing products. It's all about ideas and transforming those ideas into real products that a business can sell. And there's an ever increasing demand for all types of products across industry, commerce, retail and domestic markets. A product designer oversees the complete development cycle of a product. Engineering principles are combined with design thinking and processes to bring a product from initial concepts to the manufacturing stage. And the whole cycle can include areas like physics, maths, manufacturing materials, design tools and technology, prototyping, business strategy and so much more. Product design engineers solve challenges by fusing engineering principles and beautiful design. Product design engineers have a passion for solving problems with creative solutions. Designs are sketched out, converted into working models using tools like computer-aided design, prototypes are made, materials are chosen, manufacturing requirements and production costs are decided upon, but all this is an iterative process. It takes time and it's always a team effort. A good starting point is identifying what frustrates you about an existing product and thinking how you would do it differently to make it better. A successful and well-designed product is one that's easy to use. Think differently and don't be afraid of trying new and crazy ideas. Use your imagination and go back to first principles to come up with a new approach, a new angle, a new solution that no one has ever thought of before. Patience, positivity and perseverance. The perfect design won't happen straight away. Design is a process. Learn from what went wrong, find out why, and then use that experience to make it better. From toys to telephones, music equipment, medical products, sports equipment, kitchen appliances, pretty much everything in sight has been designed by a design engineer. And it's time to take a look at some of the most common but most amazing examples of design engineering that we use every day, starting with the microwave. Everyone knows what a microwave does, but how it does it is an engineering masterpiece. Microwave ovens heat food by passing microwave radiation through it. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiation, just like light, but with much lower energies. American engineer Percy Spencer is generally credited with inventing the microwave oven. During the Second World War, he was working on magnetrons, a device that produces microwave radiation used in radar systems, which were used to detect enemy planes. While he was working, he noticed the radar started to melt a chocolate bar in his pocket, and he figured out that microwaves could be concentrated to heat food and develop the first microwave oven. Now, radiation is all around us, 
and it travels as an electromagnetic wave. And waves can have different wavelengths, frequencies, energies, but all travel at the same speed, the speed of light. And the whole range is called the electromagnetic spectrum. The lowest energy electromagnetic spectrum waves are called radio waves and are used for radio communication, among other things. And one of the first coolest inventions that was used for radio telecommunications was... This Tesla coil may shoot out millions of volts of lightning, but it was used to generate radio waves, which led to the invention of modern radio. As we move up the electromagnetic spectrum, the wavelengths get smaller and the frequencies and energies get higher. Next, you have microwaves, then infrared, then visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, then the highest energy gamma rays. All electromagnetic radiation travels at the same speed. And I'm gonna show you how to measure that speed using only a ruler, a microwave, and in honor of Percy Spencer, a bar of chocolate. That's right, let that sink in. We are going to measure the speed of light, the cosmic speed limit. Nothing in the universe can travel faster than the speed of light. And we're gonna measure it using a ruler, bar of chocolate, and a microwave oven. Let's do it. Light can act as a wave and as a particle, but that's a whole other story. The microwave oven directs these waves at our food. And on a wave, there are points where the energy is highest, shown by the red dots, and points where the energy is lowest, shown by the green points. So, the highest points of energy will be the heating spots in the microwave. That's why there's a plate that rotates around inside it. So the food moves through these hot spots and gets cooked evenly. But we don't want it to spin. We want to see where those hot spots are. So we know where the points of highest energy are on our wave. So let's take out that dish. Get rid of this. And we are going to replace it with some bits of cardboard just to prop up our bar of chocolate from that rotating bit. Just like this. Then in goes our bar of chocolate. Fare thee well. Okay. Then we're going to put the microwave on for about 10 to 15 seconds. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so you'll see that there are melted spots. Those are the points of highest energy in our wave. And we have to measure the distance between those points. We get about six centimeters. So that'll be the point of highest energy in our wave, these red dots. So to get the total wavelength, we have to double that. And we get our wavelength to be about 12 centimeters or 0.12 meters. Now, we have a physics equation that tells us the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and the speed of light. Now the frequency of the waves in your microwave are written on the back. So we have about, it says 2,450 megahertz. That's 2 billion, 450 million waves per second. So to get the speed of light, we multiply the wavelength, which was 0.12 meters, by the frequency, which was 2 billion, 450 million waves per second, to get 294 million meters per second. Now the speed of light is actually just under 300 million meters per second. So I'm off by a few million meters per second, but that's not bad considering I'm measuring the speed of light using a microwave oven, a ruler, and some delicious chocolate. I won't lie, I did do this before and left it in too long. Only leave it on for about 10 to 15 seconds, depending on the power of your micro microwave, because you don't want this happening. I also, seeing as I ruin it, I did eat half of it. Oh. You'll also notice that a microwave oven has a wire mesh at the front. This acts as a Faraday cage and it prevents the microwave radiation from leaking out of the oven. Now, where else have we seen a Faraday cage? This is a Faraday cage and it can protect you from the lightning. Putting your hand
shine through one of these gloves means that the lightning can hit you and not pass through your body and you're protected from the electromagnetic radiation. From one awesome invention to another, noise cancelling headphones. This is achieved using tiny microphones on the outside of your headphones that listen to the noise around you. And then the onboard electronics takes it from there. The headphones create a new sound wave that's 180 degrees out of phase with the background noise. The two waves superimpose and cancel each other out in what's called destructive interference. Meaning it cancels out the sounds that surround you so all you can hear is the music from your headphones. Product design is everywhere. Developing new cutting edge products that benefit people's lives. So we're getting close to your challenge. For thousands of years, devices have been used to measure and keep track of time. Sundials, water clocks, hourglass, candle clocks, astronomical clocks, pendulum clocks, quartz clocks, atomic clocks. <gasps> During these times, it can be a bit hard to keep track of time and you can become a bit out of sync with the world. Maybe you've struggled to keep regular sleeping hours. Probably sleeping in more. Snoozing the alarm clock every time it goes off. Well, not anymore. We are challenging you to design the coolest new product of them all, the ultimate alarm clock that never fails to wake you up and get you moving. Whether your alarm clock shoots off a helicopter blade and won't turn off till you find it and put it back on, maybe you have to solve a riddle and it just gets louder and louder. The design is up to you. Send in your creative solution to the challenge. It can be a video, a photo, a drawing or written text and send it to steps at engineersireland.ie. The deadline for entries is Friday the 29th of May. We cannot wait to see your new products and remember to get up, look up and never give up.